In this session, we will discuss the Genomic Features Package. The Genomic Features Package is, provides support for something called transcript DB or transcript database objects. The idea is uh, similar to the relationship between the BS Genome Package and the individual genome packages. So let's load um, Genomic Features and let's load a transcript database that is available for download from Bioconductor. The transcript DB uh, object you can see is from Homo sapiens. It comes from uh, UCSC. It's based on the HT19 genome and it corresponds to the known gene table from UCSC. Inside this package, there's a single object with the same name of the package, and that's a long thing to write. So we are basically uh, going to rename uh, the long uh, transcript database object to. Uh, lowercase txdb. That's really just a convenience. So what is a txdb object? Let's try to print it. Basically it contains uh, information about uh, genes, uh, transcripts, exons, and coding sequences. This is a complicated structure. In human we know that uh, exons can be part of multiple different transcripts. Uh, different transcripts can have different coding sequence, uh, and uh, one gene contain, or consists of, or, or can, can often have many different transcripts. So this data package uh, contains uh, all of this information and links them together. At first, it's a little bit hard to use, I must say. Uh, one of the problems is that the terminology in the packets is not always crystal clear. Sometimes, <coughs> sometimes the word transcript is being used as uh, pre-mRNA. That means uh, a full-length transcribed part of the genome, but before uh, introns have been cut out by splicing. And sometimes transcript really means uh, the transcript after splicing has acted on it and the introns have been cut out. Uh, but let's try to examine it a little bit. And uh, we'll do that by examining a, a very specific loci uh, that is basically the first thing that prints out. So I'm going to pick out a G ranges here that uh, selects a very small region on chromosome 1. And then I'm going to look at all the exons and the transcripts and the genes that are on this particular loci. So uh, we can call genes on the GXDB object. And out we get a, uh, we get a list of, we get a genomic range, a, a G range, um, giving us basically the start and the end of the gene. Uh, so here it's actually a little unclear what exactly you mean by start and the end of a gene. Uh, that contains multiple transcripts because each of the transcripts can start and end multiple places. But I think of this as kind of order, outer coordinates for the gene. You can see that there's a gene ID column that is an internal ID uh, from the uh, from the uh, from the database uh, uh, or, or that genomic features provides, and uh, that's also going to be a little bit confusing because it's an integer. And there's also going to be a transcript ID and an exon ID that's also integers. So you got to keep, uh, you got to remember what the integer is. Is it a gene ID? Is it an exon ID? Is it a transcript ID? Okay, let's uh, look at uh, at which genes actually overlap this little uh, this little uh, uh, genomic range I have. We have a single gene on the positive strand, and uh, it actually turns out that if we do the same thing and we ignore strand, there's a different gene that overlaps the same low side, but on the reverse strand. We're going to ignore that for now.
Perhaps I was a little bit uh, uh, fast here. Uh, the gene ID we have here is not is an integer, but it's not just a, a, a continuous naming of the different things that looks that that's what it looks like a little bit from the printout. I misremembered here. The gene ID here is really something known as an entree ID. Um, you can see up here in the output from the GXDB object that. It says type of gene ID and it says entre gene ID. So when you create a transcript database uh, 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 packets or object, you select kind of some IDs you put in it. And in this case here, they're entre gene ID. I've actually double checked this by putting this into the gene into Google and searching for this entre gene ID, and it has specifically this location here. Okay, so we have a single gene here on the on the forward strand. Let's call transcripts on uh, on uh, on uh, on the object, and let's uh, look at which transcripts overlap this particular genomic range. So now we see we have three transcripts. Uh, we see that uh, in this object, in this return object here from transcript, we have no splicing information. We just have for each transcript has a separate name. This looks like a UCSC name. Uh, I, I recognize that. It's not clear from the output here. Uh, and they detail three different transcripts, but the transcripts have the same start and the same end because all we see here is the start and the end of the pre mRNA. These three different transcripts are different because they have different exons, but you can't see that in the output despite the fact that we call transcripts on GXDB. This becomes a little bit easier uh, uh, to see, perhaps if we look at what exons do we have in here. So uh, we have six exons, and these six exons are combined in different ways to form these three different transcripts. So how do we figure out how the exons are, are combined together to form transcripts. Well, in the same way as there's exons and transcripts and genes, there's a set of commands on a transcript DB called exons by and transcripts by. And the command we are after, it took me a while to, uh, to uh, uh, fully realize this, is subset, like we want to take subset by overlaps and we want to say exons by, we take it from the txdp object, and the by should be uh, by transcript. Uh, not transcript, because that would be too easy. We are just going to call it gx. So now, uh, once we get the output, Oh, we didn't have a second uh, thing in here. Once we get the output, now we can see we're a little bit in play. We can see we have uh, three elements uh, corresponding to the three different transcripts. And the three elements, the three different transcripts, each have three different uh, uh, exons. They all share the first exon, but they are spliced together uh, differently. They have and I'll turn the second exon in each transcript is different between the three transcripts. We can see that uh, the last exon, uh, there's both an exon 5 and an exon 6. Exon 5 and exon 6 overlaps, they have the same end coordinate, but they differ in their 3' prime splice site. The first exon is shared between all three different transcripts. Uh, you can see that the names of this G-Rangers list are $1, $1, $2, and $3. And that turns out to be the, <coughs> the, tra the, the transcript ID. So if we scroll up a little bit and we look at the transcript, here we have the tree transcript. And you can see there's something called a GX underscore ID. That's an integer of 1, 2, and 3. And this is what I was referring to before when I said you have these integer names. And it's hard to remember whether or not it's a transcript name, an exon name, or gene name. Okay, so this is really... In, what, in, in some sense, this is a full genic structure for this particular gene. We have the three different transcripts, we have the exons, we have how they're being put together. In the same way as we have uh, 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 exons, transcripts, and 
uh, genes, we also have CDSs or coding sequences. Now, coding sequences are also hard to deal with. It turns out that if you do something like RNA-seq, or if you do old-style uh, 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 EST sequencing, um, you can get the RNA structure of the different genes, or you can figure out where the introns are. Knowing what the coding sequences of a gene uh, is, and we know, so first of all, not all genes have a coding sequence, or not all transcripts have a coding sequence. Uh, having a coding sequence kind of implies by the name that it gets translated into protein, and that's not the case for all transcripts. Furthermore, uh, a given transcript may have multiple open reading frames. And in some databases and some organisms, what happens is you take your transcript, you look for all open reading frames inside the transcript, and you just pick the longest open reading frame as the potential uh, transcript um, uh, for that as a potential open reading frame or coding sequence for that particular gene. That doesn't turn out. That turns out to not always give you the correct the correct result. You can hear I'm passionate about this. I worked on this uh, back in 2008 and 2009 uh, uh, in Drosophila. <coughs> so let's look at what happens if we say subset by overlaps CDS uh, GXDP. So now we get something really weird out as well. Look, we have three different uh, 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 small structures. Uh, these are not uh, necessarily open reading frames because if it was an open reading frame, we should have some splicing information here. These are actually, it turns out, I've looked a little bit at it. These are kind of the coding sequence in the different uh, splice transcript intersected with the exons. This is a weird uh, uh, thing. I find it weird that it's called CDS in, in the packets. What we are really interested in is CDS by, and then uh, by equal to GX as before. This is very similar to, uh, now, we get the now we get the actual coding sequence uh, for, the, uh, for the three different transcripts. It turns out that in this version of the database, even though there are three transcripts, only one of the three transcripts has a coding sequence, and that is transcript number two. The other three, uh, the other two uh, transcripts have no coding sequence uh, uh, annotated. I went to UCSC uh, recently and figured out that in a newer version of UCSC uh, of the database, all three transcripts have a CDS. So if we recreated this uh, uh, database right now, I would get a G ranges list out with length three instead of length one. So this is really the exons of the uh, of the second transcript um, uh, intersected with the coding sequence of that particular transcript. Uh, for comparison, let's do the uh, exons by, and uh, let's um, select the transcript number two. Note that I use character headers here, so you can see that. Um, the middle exon is a uh, fully part of the coding sequence. In the first exon, the coding sequence starts a little bit into the into the into the exon, and in the last exon, uh, the coding sequence uh, ends a little bit before the end of the exon. That's very common. Uh, that shows us what the five three prime and five prime untranslated region of the gene is. So I hope that this here shows that there's a lot of uh, really useful information in here. We can manipulate it, but that the naming conventions, at least to me, seems to be uh, unsatisfactory uh, with respect to uh, what is CDS, what is a transcript, uh, and so on and so forth. We can see all of this in a different way. We can uh, we can actually call something called uh, we can call a function called transcript links that just gives us the links of the different transcript. And now these are transcript links, not in terms of their pre-mRNA, but in terms of their spliced RNA. And what helps us a little bit is that there's an argument to this function uh, called um, with uh, CDS, let me see, uh, with CDS on CDS underscore link equal true. And then actually we, uh, we don't want this subset by overlaps we uh, just want this uh, subset here, 
where the, um, how did I do it? We uh, say that the gene ID is equal to uh, this uh, entry ID we talked about uh, uh, up, in the, uh, up in the beginning when I talked about gene IDs. Okay, um, I seem to be missing uh, a transcript links. Yeah, I need a closing parameter. So, so here we see the three different transcripts. We see that each of them have three exons. We see they have different lengths because they are spliced differently. And we see that two of the transcript has a CDS length of zero, which basically says that there's no coding sequence inside those two transcripts. And the last one that has a coding that have, have a CDS length of, of 402, um, I think that those 402 bases are, let's see here, uh, Let's say two, and let's say sum width. When I'm checking, I get 402 basis nucleotides out when I look at the coding sequence. So this tells you, uh, th this gives you some idea of the structure. Uh, underneath it all, all of this is stored in something called a SQLite database. And there's a set of functions for querying this database directly using SQL commands. Uh, I don't really see the big point of this. I think these transcript, exon, CDS, gene, and the same thing with by, like exon by and transcript by, should uh, more than satisfy most users here. You just got to remember which one of the commands uh, gives you what. Finally, I will say that unlike uh, genome packages, there actually is rather few transcript databases available from the Bioconductor website. Uh, I asked the uh, core Bioconductor developers about this, and the answer was that there are so many different uh, transcript annotations out there that they really prefer that users make their own TXDB objects based on uh, getting uh, information uh, from either Biomart or UCSC. There's a couple of convenience functions for doing this in genomic features, and it's described in the, uh, in the, uh, in the vignette. Uh, I think that it's something like make GXDB from Biomart or make GXDB from UCSC, and you basically just tell what table, what genome, and it goes online and, and downloads it and, uh, and constructs it. Uh, then you get a snapshot uh, that's uh, from a given uh, point in time that's uh, useful for your own analysis. So don't necessarily think that uh, all useful TXDB objects are hosted on the Bioconductor website because there's only one for human.